even as early as Tuesday. So I wanted everyone to know how we're taking steps to make sure everyone is this takes an all of government approach. So I have my dream team on people who've been with us through too many extreme events in the last two and a half years, hurricanes, blizzards, thousand year flooding events, air quality challenges. So I have the best right here in New York City. I have Commissioner Jackie Bray, uh, Commissioner of Homeland Security and Emergency Services and former Chief of Staff to the National Weather Services. So this is the Super Bowl of uh, weather events. Catherine Garcia, the Director of State Operations, who's been at my side through all of these disasters. I appreciate her expertise. Joining us on Zoom are Dr. James McDonald, the Commissioner of Health, because this is an event that is going to affect people's health. And Rory Christian, the Chair of the Public Service Committee, to give the public updates on how they can be involved in helping preserve our energy consumption during this time and what we're doing in terms of resiliency. So in a couple of moments, I'll ask Commissioner Bray to give us an update on the latest forecast from the National Weather And some of this is from the State Weather Risk Communication Center that we just unveiled last year, uh, which is giving us real-time data like we've never had before. So we don't need any fancy data to tell us this. It's going to be extremely hot and uncomfortable. In fact, it'll be dangerously hot. That is something I want everyone to keep in their minds when they're thinking about their families, their friends, their neighbors, and their pets. I know New Yorkers are tough. We think we can handle it all without breaking a sweat, and we probably will. But we'll be able to get through this because we'll be prepared. But that will be different by so many measurements. As I said, the real feel, feels like temperature, is going to be over 100 degrees, even starting today in upstate New York. This event is largely focused, as you can see from the screens behind me, that purple, purple means extremely dangerous. That is along the I-90 through a corridor from Buffalo all the way to Albany and points in between. So every region of upstate is going to be hit with over 100 degree real feel. And even up on the Canadian border, which rarely sees these high temperatures, they'll have at least four days of a massive field temperatures of over 100 degrees up on the Canadian border. So how are we preparing? This is an all of government approach. And we need to focus all of our energy on protecting the health and safety of New Yorkers. First of all, do we have the right equipment and personnel in place to handle any circumstance that arises? Today, I'm announcing we're opening the state's emergency operations center, which is a statewide hub to monitor conditions and share resources. And this includes constant communication with our county leaders. I have been in contact with all major principals across this corridor yesterday, letting them know that we are ready to help them. They had a, a call with their emergency team and my emergency team just yesterday as well. So we want to make sure that they're ready to be able to staff all their cooling centers, have the water they need, taking care of and focusing on anywhere we can be helpful to them as well. In addition, yesterday I activated the National Guard with the guardsmen stationed now in Syracuse and Albany, ready to assist and be deployed wherever they are needed. And as I said, we reached out to the emergency management personnel in all 62 counties, reminding them to have direct communication with their constituents as well. This also includes communication with our utility companies to minimize the risk of brownouts or power. More from that from Rory Christian, the chair of the Public Service Commission, in a couple of minutes. Laser focused on public health. This is a time of significant risk, and we're doing our best to make sure that all lives are protected. But as we reported before, it is of all the weather events that have happened and can happen, and this is becoming We know that heat events, loss of life from heat stroke, for example, is the number one of being these events. And so we're for this from well and opening guidance to hospitals and nursing homes. We also have a map of all of our websites of all the cooling centers to make sure people can take time to find one near them. Agencies that oversee the congregate settings, like Office of Mental Health, Office of People with Developmental Disabilities, are focused right now on making sure all the residents are safe. And when it comes to our children, every parent's worry. I, have, I know that many school districts have already canceled or delayed cl classes during this heat wave. And we're encouraging all the districts to closely monitor the conditions. 
Make sure that children have access to water all day, stay hydrated, and really avoid playing outside in direct sunlight where young bodies become dehydrated so quickly and overcome with the heat. Department of Environmental Conservation and the Health Department are also monitoring the air quality and will continue to give air quality health alerts as we have this confluence of the heat, but also extreme humidity, which can compromise the air quality. So today we're announcing that we'll be issuing an alert for ozone in New York City, lower Hudson and Western New York regions from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. We'll be continuing to update that. Concerned about our own workforce, state DOT workers, thruway workers, they're on modified schedules to protect those who have to work outdoors. And I encourage private employers to make similar accommodations. And here's the fun one. We're opening our pools and beaches a little bit early. Tomorrow is a federal holiday in observance of Juneteenth. So uh, everyone will be home. Take your kids to the state parks and the beaches and have a good chance to cool off in uh, refreshing water. And so families have a safe place to cool off and beat the heat. Only swim, though, if there's a lifeguard on duty and take precautions in the water. Now, a couple of safety tips before I turn it over to the team. I cannot emphasize enough that extreme heat can be deadly. New Yorkers need to know how to stay safe. Dr. McDonald will share some of his tips on how to spot heat stroke, how to avoid it in the first place. But stay indoors, stay with your air conditioning. If you don't have AC, go to a library, a government building, or a cooling center near you. Go to our website and find the cooling center. Make a plan so you're ready no matter what happens. If you have to be outdoors, stay heavily hydrated. Drink water all day long. Avoid caffeine and al alcohol as well, which can be dehydrating. So it lets you remember, we look out for each other. That's what New Yorkers do. Not just our own families, but your neighbors, the elderly, medically vulnerable individuals who may live near you. And of course, our pets look to us for their own survival during conditions like this. So make sure that they are safe. Do not leave them in a hot car. That can be devastating. So take care of our kids, elderly, pets, everything we love. And also, I want to thank our healthcare workers and emergency responders whenever you see them. They're going to be out there. They don't take days off just because it's hot out. So if you see them, they'll be uncomfortable, but hopefully uh, they'll be getting through this uh, with the support of our entire community, a grateful community. And the worst should be over by Saturday. Stay safe, stay hydrated, and stay cool. Now with that, let me turn it over to Commissioner Bray for an update on what to anticipate. Commissioner Bray. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate that. Um, as the governor said, we're expecting four days of extreme heat. I just want to run through a little bit um, region specific. The worst heat will be in a bit of a triangle. If you think of Albany down to Ithaca over to Rochester, feels like temps uh, 103 to 107 today. Albany and Plattsburgh themselves feels like temps at 100 today. Um, the Plattsburgh temp, while the temperature uh, we have seen before, uh, no one at the Weather Service can remember a feels like temp on our Canadian border of 100, which we they will see for some time this week. Um, for New York City and Long Island, the heat will be worse later in the week. So Thursday, Friday, the heat shifts south and east. Um, while the next couple days will be no joke for them, uh, Thursday and Friday will be particularly uh, concerning for New York City and Long Island. Um, but <clears throat> over the next four days, everywhere across the state feels like temps over the mid 90s. Um, today is the hottest, but the worst heat risks will be felt in New York on Wednesday and Thursday. And as the governor said, this is really a new normal for us. And so we need to be good and get good about dealing with heat. So I want to add a little bit of detail here. Heat risk is cumulative, which means that one very hot day, which these regions have seen several times, uh, becomes less of an issue both for our energy grid and for human health uh, than several very hot days. And four very hot days is really un, um, at this level is really something we don't see in these cities. So think about heat risk, think about the cumulative nature, number one. Number two, early season heat is more dangerous than late season heat. We are actually good at acclimatizing. We are good at getting used to the heat, uh, but this is very early to have this level of heat in the state, and that will make it more dangerous. And number three, um, there will be no real nighttime relief. Nighttime temps will stay up in the 70s, 75 or higher, 
Uh, and that means that our bodies won't have the chance to um, get that relief, cool down, uh, and it will make it a more dangerous event. Um, as the governor says, we are prepared. I wanna give some folks, people, um, helpful links and helpful phone numbers. 211 statewide and 311 where it is available will have the addresses and the locations of cooling centers across the state. So if you need help, if you need to get to air conditioning, those are two great numbers, 211, 311. You can sign up for alerts at alert.ny.gov to get real-time information right on your phone. Um, you can find cooling centers at health.ny.gov backslash cooling centers. You can find air quality information at airnow.gov. And you can find the maps that we're using, the heat risk, which is actually new this year to the East Coast, um, at wcp.ncep.noaa.gov backslash heat risk. And all of those links are on our website. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Commissioner Bray. And now we'll hear from Rory Christian, the chair and CEO of the Public Service Commission about steps that his agency has been taking. Thank you, Governor. And thank you, Jackie, for the overview. So we at the Department of Public Service have been tracking electric system conditions and overseeing utility response to any situations that may arise as a result of this week's excessive heat. Uh, again, we're in direct contact with utility leaders and are ensuring that they're taking the necessary steps to prepare their teams and have their 5,500 uh, staff on hand to address any issues that arise. Uh, I assure you all that right now the system is stable and uh, plan maintenance deferred until the conclusion of the event. Uh, we're also pausing excavation activity to ensure that there are no accidental incidents that can cause uh, additional problems. Um, now, uh, as pointed out earlier, what's unique about this event is the timing and its duration. It's happening earlier in the year um, at a point where uh, we're not used to it, but the system as a whole is built to handle the worst that we can throw at it. Um, but again, the longer the situation lasts, the more extreme the stress on the system, uh, the more likely there will be damage to the system. Um, and again, the combination of high energy use and high temperature uh, will place stresses on the system that can cause isolated damage and outages. Uh, we know through working with the New York ISO, we have ample generation available to meet our needs, but these isolated outages will uh, need to be addressed if they occur. And again, this is part of our work with the utilities. We have the equipment um, and the processes in place to address any issues as they arise. Uh, we're taking a number of preemptive steps in working with the utilities. Again, in addition to having the crews and the equipment to deal with any arise, we're also taking preemptive steps to do voltage reduction in certain areas where needed to reduce the stress on the system. And we're doing active cooling of transformers, essentially spraying them down with water, putting up shading uh, to ensure that these equipment can work in the higher than normal and higher than expected temperatures. Now, in terms of what we can all do, um, again, using less energy will go a long way towards us weathering this particular event. Um, closed drapes, windows and doors to try to keep uh, uh, the solar heat from building up in your home. This can keep you cool, keep you comfortable uh, to the degree you can keep your temperature as uh, comfortable as possible. Try to keep your air conditioner set point uh, in the mid to high 70s, um, was particularly given the length and duration is critically important. Um, also, to the degree you can, seal any openings in your windows or any gaps around the air conditioner uh, to minimize the loss of cooling. Uh, you want to cool your home, not the outside environment. Uh, so these are just a few of many steps that you can take. Um, Information is available online. And if you don't have an air conditioner in your home, there are a number of cooling centers available throughout the state, as Commissioner Bray pointed out. Uh, dial 211 for that information throughout the state and in New York City, dial 311. Uh, again, we're taking this uh, particular event very seriously. Uh, it's unique in that it's happening earlier in the year and event can go a long way towards minimizing any potential impacts. Thank you all. Thank you, Chairman Christian, uh, for the update on how we're managing uh, what we anticipate to be higher than usual pressure on our energy grid, but also what we can do personally as individuals in terms of if you're not home at your apartment, 
why would you leave the air conditioning on all day if there's no pets at home? So doing your laundry late at night, early in the morning, turning on the dishwasher late at night, early in the morning, all of us can be cognizant. These are actually good practices all the time, but particularly now when there'll be additional pressure by high use of air conditioning from companies and individuals during this heat wave over this week. So we can make sure that we have uh, the resiliency and the energy uh, generation that we need to get through this. So thank you and your agency for all the great work they're doing. Uh, also the effect on human beings. So let's hear.